so at this point, we're ready to run some simulations. Um, what we'd expect to get are three, uh, sorry, four simulations because we have four designs specified here in design mode. Uh, what you would do is you would click on this little run button to run the simulations. Um, you get a little dialog here and you would go ahead and click run. And what we're actually going to do rather than run these simulations is we're going to open up one of our sample files that already has some output uh, that we can talk through uh, in a little more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and um, open projects here. And so BOP ships with three different sample files. One is the set of design and parametric cases, and then two related to optimizations, uh, new construction and retrofit. So I'm going to open this first design and parametrics sample case. And so what we're going to see uh, when this opens is that we've defined in BOPS already a number of different uh, cases that we've run uh, in the software. Um, so you can see along the top here that we have multiple cases uh, defined. Um, you can look through, uh, you know, the building geometry. If we go to the options screen, we can see that there were a number of uh, designs set up again. Um, and this in this example here, this is a what if what if analysis using the Energy Plus simulation engine. And so what we did is we had a base design, and for each design, we had a series of, of changes from that design um, in 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 uh, the, the building component specified here. So the walls has only an improvement in walls relative to the base. Uh, this is just an improvement in windows relative to the base, and so on. So we're going to have about six six simulation results here. Um, and if we look at the site screen, we can see that we ran the simulations here in Atlanta. So I'll go ahead and, so when you have output, there's an output button here that you can click on. Uh, if you can't click on this output button or it doesn't show up, that means you haven't yet run simulations and you'll need to run them. So here you have the output for this case. Um, as I said, here are the six points now being displayed. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the specific metric you're, metrics that you're seeing on the X and Y axis here, but uh, the Y axis is a cost metric uh, that includes both the utility bills and the cost of the technology itself. And on the X axis, we have an energy savings metric, in this case, source energy savings. And so, generally speaking, what you'd like to do is, if this is your base building, maybe your standard practice building and these were a number of different alternative designs that you were evaluating, you'd like to generally be uh, down from this point, which means that you're saving on cost. And by saving on cost, I mean that the utility bill savings is going to be greater than the cost of the technology. Perhaps it's rolled into a mortgage or a loan payment. Um, so you have uh, absolute cost savings, and you've got energy savings. You're to the right of this point. So you'd like to be as far down and to the right as possible. Strictly speaking, from a cost point of view, this point here would be your, your most economical uh, uh, decision, and this would be the point that saves the most energy. Um, uh, for these six points, uh, they're all being selected at the moment, so we get all of their results in the other two graphs. Uh, the bottom left graph is a, what we call the end use graph. At the moment, it's showing source energy use and it's being uh, disaggregated by the different end uses in the buildings. Uh, so, for example, if we were to look at, so here's the lighting uh, design uh, relative to the base. Um, if we were to compare these different end uses, we'd expect to see in the lighting end use, the yellow, that we have drastically reduced the lighting energy use um, and that it would have also some um, impacts on the heating and cooling of the building because you've got different uh, internal gains from the reduced lighting. Um, if you right-click on this graph, there's a number of different uh, pieces of information you can show on the graph. Uh, you can show utility bills. You can show site energy for any of the different fuel types. Uh, so if you looked at just electricity um, in kilowatt hours, you get that information. Um, you can also look at carbon emissions. Um, there's different ways that you can you can uh, sort of different graph displays uh, 
For example, you could choose to hide constant end uses. So if you want to see just what is different uh, across these different designs in terms of their energy consumption, you could you could uh, turn on high constant end uses, and now you'll see that these are the only end uses that have changed uh, between the, the different points. Uh, so that's sometimes uh, a useful thing to do. Um, I'm going to go back to source energy here. Um, you can also select just a, a single point. So, for example, if I looked at that lighting design, it's going to select only that point and, and the reference and show that point relative to the reference. Um, you can also drag a box and uh, select different points that way as well. Um, uh, so for the point I have selected now, it is the lighting design uh, for direct comparison. On the right side, what we see is uh, these blue boxes here say, the legend says current point. So these are the options that make up the uh, point that is selected here in blue. Um, and this is a little bit of a similar representation to, if we go back to the options screen, the matrix here. It's sort of positionally showing what options you have selected um, in the range of options. So what we can actually tell is that um, uh, that we have a, let's see, let me scroll down actually. So here's the lighting category. So what we can see is that in our current point, we have option six selected. And in our base building, we had option two selected. So this was, generally speaking, an improvement in the lighting category. Um, and that's why we got that energy savings. Uh, it's also showing in this light gray, it might be hard to see, there's a dark gray and a light gray. So the dark gray are the options different from the current point that are in our reference building, which is selected in dark gray. The light gray shows options that are selected across any of our uh, designs here. Uh, so there, in some other designs, we had evaluated uh, a different air conditioner or a different furnace. But in the lighting design relative to our reference, the, the change was just in the lighting category here. Um, and you can see then uh, the cost associated with this uh, technology uh, and the name of the technology here. Uh, at the very bottom of this graph, um, well, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but there, there's information here also to show the, the, uh, the heating and cooling capacities. Uh, there's actually a bug in the current version that it's not being displayed. It's showing zero tons and zero kb2 per hour. Uh, we're going to be issuing a bug fix release pretty soon. Um, but generally speaking, what you would see is you would see you could see a downsizing benefit if you would auto size this building. That the fact that you put in more efficient lighting, you have less uh, uh, demand on your HVAC system, and therefore you could have a smaller HVAC system that could be reflected here uh, in terms of an output. Uh, if you right-click on this graph, you can uh, look at the information in terms of either present value dollars or capital cost. Uh, present value dollars would be your capital cost plus any uh, replacement costs out in the future uh, brought back to the present. So again, uh, if you've got a technology, um, take, uh, so here's AC and furnace uh, design. Uh, so again, you can see their improvements. Uh, because these are two technologies that last for, we can look at how long they last, for 15 or 20 years, let's say, uh, and the analysis period is currently 30 years, there's going to be a replacement in years 15 or 20 for these technologies and the replacement costs associated with that. Um, and actually, it, it, because that replacement is going to go beyond year 30, if it was a 20-year lifetime, such that you replace something year 20, and then it would last until year 40, but we only have a 30-year analysis, there's actually a, a little bit of a, um, a adjustment or residual value that is, is calculated in year 30, the fact that you still have some remaining life on that equipment. Uh, so BIOPS is, is taking that into account as well. Um, but you could come here and you could look at strictly what is the capital cost, the upfront cost year one to put in this technology. Um, the last thing I'll mention is so when you have just a single point selected, uh, this is the display you get, a uh, nice display that, that quickly pairs down where your difference is between, your different, uh, between this building and the reference building. Um, when you have multiple points selected, um, we pair it down even more. And what we do is we show for a, a, a reference 
we again positionally, you can hover over to see the technologies, positionally show uh, what the technologies are in the different categories. But for every other design, we we show only the when there's a difference between that design and this, this reference design. So in the walls design, there's a difference in the wall insulation uh, and the wall sheathing insulation. Um, whereas for the window type, it shows nothing in the walls category because it's the same as this design here. It's got the same wall construction. But for the window design, if I were to scroll down and come to the windows category, now you can see that there's a there's a difference. Um, so positionally, it's showing the differences for these designs, and it, it tries to pare down the information as much as possible so you can very quickly get a sense of what the, the option changes are, what the technology differences are between your different designs. Um, so that gives you a sense of, of in design mode running sort of uh, several buildings at a time that you define uh, how you would define them on the input screen and then what kind of output results you would get here. Um, at this point, we're going to talk a little bit briefly about uh, setting up sort of multiple cases and and um, and move on to some more advanced analysis in terms of uh, running more than just a couple of designs or uh, optimization mode. And Craig's going to talk a little bit about that. Thanks, Scott. Uh, just one comment before moving on in, in the particular example that Scott used to illustrate the, the display on the right-hand side may have not seemed particularly useful since we had uh, named designs here, uh, so it's a little bit obvious that the thing that's different in the lighting case is, in fact, indicated as lighting. But in other use of BOP, when you have general uh, designs that you're varying multiple um, characteristics and for multiple options, there may not be a, a simple name here that indicated uh, the characteristics for that design. So then the, the graphical display here is, is uh, more useful. 